everybody, Kara here. I hope everyone is glad that school is done, that we're working our way through amazing social distance graduations and celebrations. I hope that everyone is staying safe and everyone is staying healthy. Um, however, because it is almost the weekend, I wanted to share with you the best way to make a cocktail um, to celebrate. It's starting to become hotter outside, at least here in Texas. Uh, hurricane season has started, which means if you're a Southern girl, uh, you know that hurricanes really just mean hurricane parties. And we wanna make sure that you're very well prepared. Okay, so we're going to use just um, a regular mason jar, okay? And in the mason jar, I know you see a couple of things here. Um, there's a couple of things that, you know, I don't really even know how to pronounce their names, um, but they're, they're good to make cocktails, okay? So the first one, who doesn't love a little blue for their cocktail? This is a, a chemical that's found in most uh, cocktail mixes and, and wine. So we're gonna add a little bit of that. Uh, gotta have a good color, right? Um, in case we wanted the color to be a little bit um, darker um, and bold, we're gonna add some things uh, that are called mega purple. These little, yeah, uh-oh, slippery. We're gonna add some of that in there. Okay, now we wanna also make sure that we've got chemicals like all the GMOs. Um, if we do some fruit cocktails that those fruits maybe haven't been grown organically, we're gonna mix those all in. Um, this is some type of salt, I think, but not like table salt, it's just another additive, cause you know, we don't want anything to happen to our drink if we don't drink it fast enough. And then of course, the best thing to make uh, drinks really refreshing um, is probably you know, a little sugar. So let's see how much sugar. That that would be good for about just a glass of one cocktail. That was about, I don't know, six or eight, maybe nine grams of sugar, which is roughly a little over a tablespoon. All right, so look at that amazingness, guys. Doesn't that look incredibly delicious? And doesn't it look incredibly refreshing and healthy? Okay, so let's pour that in a glass because we need to enjoy our cocktail here. All right. Oh, there's not a lot of grapes in here. Well, that is what mass-produced wine does to your wine. They add and use GMOs in the growing process. They make sure to add sugar and other additives and other chemicals in the bottling process. And this is what you get. Now your wine doesn't look like that because they make sure that it looks the way wine is supposed to look. Now, everyone has been quarantined for the last 90, I don't know, 60, 70, 90 days. And we're all starting to feel our clothes feel a little bit tighter and not um, as healthy as we probably should be. I know we've all been trying to get out there and get some exercise. And I also know that part of the reason, well, that we are all a little bit more sane during this time is because of FaceTime and Zoom calls and having that social interaction that way, but also for enjoying a cocktail every now and then and again. Maybe a whole bottle of wine is what was up your alley this past weekend. Um, I know that for today, I'm going to enjoy one of our single serve uh, fiddle neck Chardonnays that doesn't have all of this in it. It's grown organically. It's grown with biodynamic farming practices. And it is also then bottled consciously to ensure that none of this yucky stuff is in it. To make sure, we take it a step further and we make sure to independently lab test it twice at the grape growing process and then again in the bottling process. So, I'm going to open a glass of wine. 
I'm going to enjoy the weekend that is coming and I hope you all have a safe, safe and happy weekend. And cheers to clean crafted wine that's actually good for you. Bye.